Uh, welcome to our Elevate Your Waiver Process with Automation webinar. Um, my name is Daniel Brown. I am a customer success manager here at Level Set, which means I am the person that our customers come to uh, when they have issues, when they want to work on their processes, when they want to understand more about how they can make Level Set work best for them. Um, and with me, I have Jason Ross who is our director of product here at Level Set. Uh, and he will be showing a little bit about the, uh, the actual process we'll be discussing throughout this, um, throughout this webinar. So first, who are we? Um, Level Set is a, uh, basically what we do is we offer a software platform that helps people manage their lien rights to protect payment and mitigate risk. Um, we have a great many customers who also use us to manage their waivers, which is uh, certainly part of the lien rights management process and is something that we're going to be covering here today. So for today, we will be um, doing an overview over lien waivers, you know, what they are, I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with them, but there's some things we always like to sort of cover to better explain the, over process, the overall process. We'll talk about why automation lien waivers is important versus how processes often work for our customers, and then how we can help. And then at the uh, at the end of the at the end of this uh, conversation, we will have a quick demo about how our lien waivers are actually managed in Level Set, and we'll save the questions for the end of the uh, for the end of the, of the presentation. And just to reiterate, if you do have questions, please use the Q and A box. You can see the bottom of the screen there. Um, and we will go over them towards the end of the call. So just a quick overview of lien waivers. Um, we use this matrix to sort of describe like the different kinds of waivers that exist. But overall, depending on who's using them, how they're using them, they effectively are receipts, right? So they protect the owner, they protect the lender from any sort of lien claim because they have their evidence of, of and signed evidence of payment from across the entire payment chain. Uh, we use this matrix to describe the differences between partial waivers, final waivers, conditional and unconditional waivers. And we'll go a little bit more into that in the next slide here. So the difference between conditional and unconditional is pretty simple. Um, a conditional waiver is something that states you, it is only effective if you actually get paid the amount stipulated on the waiver. Unconditional is you're signing away your lien rights on that much money for that job uh, pretty much right there in the document. So it's something that, you know, generally speaking, yes, you should always sign a waiver, but only if you're signing the correct lien waiver at the correct time. And this is pretty important across the entire chain because if you, if you're signing the wrong waiver, you know, that somebody has requested from you, you could actually be giving up some of your lien rights. If you're sending or requesting the wrong waiver, you could be delaying payment because oftentimes, you know, as I'm sure many of you know, um, owners, lenders don't release payment until they've collected all the waivers for that pay application. And if some of those waivers are amiss or some of them are the wrong type, that can further delay things and hold up payment for the entire chain. Why is automation important? So the way we look at it is because, you know, we all know managing these waivers can be a real hassle, right? And a lot of our customers that I, you know, that I work with personally, prior to coming to us, um, used spreadsheets, they used paper documentation, they used, you know, they have to spend time every day making sure that they're matching up invoices to waivers and requests to, uh, you know, requests for going out to the correct people. And it really made for a, um, an often complicated and very time consuming process. So what we attempted to do is to automate this process as best we can, find a way to make sure that the process is streamlined and functional for everyone. And that there is um, a consistent method in place by which waivers can be requested, and exchanged without having to manage it so manually as is often the case.
So, you know, again, part of the reason why we think this is important and why so many of our customers find value in it is because, you know, I know, for example, um, some general contractors, if they have, you know, five or six subcontractors, and then each one of those has multiple sub-tier suppliers and other contractors on the project that can go down, you know, several tiers down the chain, you know, the, the any reasonably sized product can suddenly amount to dozens of waivers needing to be collected for every pay application period. And to go back to that matrix that we looked at earlier of partial versus final, conditional versus unconditional waiver types, managing each one of those types, if the job requires it, can mean for every pay application, you're doing you're doing that twice, essentially, in some cases. So it can be, uh, as I'm sure a lot of you know, it can be a very, very time-consuming, very complicated process. Um, I've seen some of the spreadsheets that some of our customers use to manage this, and they are workbooks of many pages and a lot of manual entry. Uh, so what we what we attempted to do here was to try to come up with an automation process that would um, simplify it and very much just streamline the overall amount of work required to manage this part of the process of, of the payment chain. So how does it work conceptually? Um, the way it works is if you are requesting a waiver from downstream, essentially the invoice information, the accounts payable information exists in level set. That information and then the cut, the information of your subcontractor is then used to generate a waiver request. They receive the waiver electronically. If they further much, if, if they have subcontractors or vendors to include in that payment application, then that same document will be sent further down the chain to complete the chain of waiver control, right? And then once they're all received, they all come back to you. Now, this is if you're requesting waivers from higher up. If you, it also works the other way as far as managing waiver requests you receive. Right. Or if you have um, accounts receivables that you have to have waivers for, that also can be automated. So it works both ways. So th this, this is a process that is much the same method, it's much the same workflow, um, but it works equally well whether or not you are on the top of the, pay of the contractual hierarchy or you're somewhere as a supplier just needing to make sure you control your waivers and fill them out to receive payment from higher up the chain. So I, um, I think at this point we can dive into it. Jason, do you want to start showing them how this works? All right. Uh, you can see my dashboard for level set. Yep, we sure can. Great. Uh, okay. So uh, you heard Dan talk through a lot of the, the features and, and uh, key components of our platform here. Some of the things I really want to touch on are the automation, how we configure and set up some of that automation, just look at some of uh, the rules that we configure and then look at some of the results of what those rules would generate and how you'll manage your waivers where you can see them and things like that. So starting with uh, setting up some automation on your waivers, we would set that up in our document settings. In our document settings, we have our document rules, which will allow us to determine who we want to send documents to, how we want to create them, turn them on and off, configure how they're how they're set up and what they're going to run on and, and what they'll create. So looking at our waivers, they're called a playbook. Um, we'll, we'll edit that and look at what that means. So you can determine who should the rule apply to. You can configure it to all your jobs or to specific customers, or specific job segments, and you have control over how to create those segments. Uh, and then you can configure your progress conditional and unconditional or final as well. Um, and set, do you want to approve it? And I'll show you what that means when you say approval. That means you want to make sure that you put eyes on each one of those, so who it's going to go to, and then the timing for when those are going to go out. Looking into the timing, you can say, send it after one day, send it after 10 days, so you have it in your approval queue. And you can also group them all into a single waiver for multiple invoices in a, in a calendar month, uh, as well as determining who you're going to email them to. So that is some of the, a very quick run through of sort of how you would configure an automation rule. Uh, and that, that automation is gonna then uh, create those waivers automatically based on those uh, configurations you've set. So before I do that, I'm gonna hop over to this tab, which has just a test customer with two open invoices. 
you'll see that on these two open invoices, uh, there's a conditional waiver created. Um, the way that that happened was we set up that automation rule and the rule ran and then put those two conditional waivers into my queue for approval. So it <clears throat> automatically created those waivers for me, allows gives me a deadline that I need to act so that it gets sent out. And then I can view the waiver here, see that it has all the appropriate information, uh, matches the invoice that it was tied to and has the right contact. If that's the case, then I can go ahead and send the waiver from here. And I've automated the tying together of our accounts receivable or accounts payable to a created invoice and sent that out to a customer all from this waiver's queue. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and cancel that. And then if I have I already want, sent an invoice and want to go look, I'm, I'm sorry, sent a waiver and want to go look at it, I can see that here in my sent waivers uh, tab. That shows me waivers that I've already sent, gives me a status, the amount, and I can again can view that. So that's an all in one place to view both my pending and sent waivers. Uh, if I had had ones coming from other customers, they would show here in that queue as requested and received. Um, and so through that process, you can see also the invoices that would be tied to those waivers, uh, the two ones that we looked at before that create those waivers on that on this same tab here. Uh, you can see how your accounts receivable, accounts payable, all tie together to the automation rule we configured all the way through the queue for your approval. Um, and you can you can set those to auto approve if you have specific conditions. So you can automate it even further where you don't have to put eyes on them. But you've got a lot of flexibility into what you want to configure, who you want to send it to, how you want to manage your queue, and then how you want how you can go back and look at the documents that are created. So all in all, in all a very powerful process to help you automate what can be very manual and time consuming processes uh, and get them flowing through our system and tracked in a very effective way. So and I know I touched on that very quickly. Uh, sorry, Dan, I mean to cut you off, but uh, I just wanted to sort of show you at a high level uh, the things that Dan referenced, and then uh, we can always ask questions, dig into them. And uh, if we ever, if you ever were interested, it certainly set you up with a longer demo and, and dig into those in a, in a much finer level. And so, Jason, this process is going to be much the same for waivers that you are requesting from the down chain, right, from your vendors yes. and suppliers and so on? Yeah, great point. Yeah, it, it works the same way, whether it's receivable or payable, you can automate them in the same way and you would see them either in waivers from others or, or my waivers, uh, but the process would work the same way. Great, great. And so um, it, it's, it's worth mentioning that this process generally works best if we have some sort of method to collect the data, which is something that, you know, there's a lot of ways we can get that in a level set. There's a lot of ways we can, you know, you can input it into level set. Um, but having that accounts receivable and accounts payable data update regularly and is really going to be a key component to maximizing the effectiveness of these automations. Um, and uh, as far as what the waivers actually look like, every waiver that we have built in the system is per state individual statutes. Uh, if there isn't, if there are any, many states do not have very clean laws as far as what actually needs to be um needs to be on a waiver but they are customizable to an extent so level set does support having your own waivers put in there if you do have some if you have a general contractor or a customer who likes a specific waiver type um that's something that we can support and uh and work into the automation so at this point i think we covered everything that we need to cover i want to open up the floor to any questions No, looks like no questions so far. I guess we did a really good job, Jason. Okay. Uh, one question, Dan, and I'm happy to read it out. Um, we've got a question from Angela saying, how do you handle the states that require notary with their waivers? That's a very good question. So the states that do require notary, the state statutory form that level set generates will have a field for a notary to fill out. Typically the way these works is the notarization, the waiver itself needs to be printed out, notarized, and then re-uploaded into level set um, in order for the waiver to then be received and processed. How that experience looks like, it looks if you're requesting it from say one of your vendors is they will receive an email with that form and instructions on what to do next with it. And uh, 
and that's pretty much pretty much how we handle it. I mean, it, there's no way to get around the fact that a notarization process is a very paper based process. So we uh, we support that as best we can, but it is something that that is included in that functionality. Awesome. Thank you so much. And it looks like we have another question from Adrienne Austin. She's saying uh, her AP department is not in Procore yet. Can she still use level set if her AP data is not in Procore? Yes, we have a lot of ways to get data into level set. Um, there are a few different ways built into the actual platform itself, but probably the most common way that we receive it is just with spreadsheets that are regularly emailed into us are sent through a secure file transfer protocol uh, client straight to our data team. And then that process requires a little bit of initial setup for us to map everything properly, but there's no need to have Procore to use level set. Um, we can receive AP and AR data, all your job data through a spreadsheet integration or through um, a process that exists in the actual platform that if your data is very, very clean and doesn't require much logic, works really fast and really great. Awesome. Thank you. I think that's everything. Oh, here's another one. Um, spreadsheets are vi uh, a viable option. However, do you work with Sage 300? So, and Jason might be able to speak a little bit more to this. I believe we used to work with Sage, but it wasn't a very great integration. Um, so typically what we advise our Sage users to do is to, we can work with them for a spreadsheet integration like that. And, uh, and communicate with them. And really the spreadsheets are nice because if for whatever reason the reporting that Sage can produce requires a little bit of work on our end to to make work, then we can we can include some logic into that to sort of make the process happen. Um, but that gets pretty far into the weeds as far as how that actually works. But suffice it to say, I've worked with a lot of spreadsheet integrations. Um, one customer I had, he their, their system was almost as old as I am. And um, you know, I've been around for a minute, so it's uh, it's something that we can we can almost always make work um, as long as as long as we have support from your team as well to do it. Um, yeah, does Scott preliminary notices can have automation like the waivers? Really, any of the documents in Level Set can can be automated, um, and beyond beyond the waivers. Uh, you know, like a really common system might be automate your prelim. If you're a supplier, for example, do like a day 31 notice. Um, maybe that escalates a notice of intent to lean. And then the automations themselves or those kinds of documents can be set to go out automatically or they can be set to approve. So say people might want the lean to line up and be ready to go, but that becomes like your final, like, hey, I need to call these people and see what's going on here list. And uh and yeah, that's something you know we can always talk through a good process and what we see as best practices and what you know our most uh, I would say our most effective customers tend to use, um, depending on what your individual circumstances are. But short answer, yes, absolutely. Awesome. Thanks, Dan. And I, I had a question just um out of curiosity, I know, you know, obviously as a customer success manager, you are, you know, on the front lines working with a lot of our suppliers. Do you have any um, success stories that you can share about like automation and just some good progress that you've seen with your customers that maybe came to you, like you said earlier in the presentation with complicated spreadsheets and, you know, um, sort of mm -hmm. where they came from and where they are now? Um, yeah. So I'm working with a customer right now who came from a they were spending three or four hours a day processing waivers. They're a fairly sizable general contractor in the Southeast. Um, and right now, you know, they're not totally live yet, but they're looking at essentially reducing that amount of time to maybe three or four hours per week. Uh, so an enormous time saver for their team um, and, and a cleaner process than what they had before. They that team was is, is they're very on it like they, they they know their job and they're great at it and they're super efficient but um they did have some that would fall through the cracks every once in a while or you know something that was like the wrong waiver was sent or the wrong, wrong waiver was returned and are incomplete 
you know, that sort of thing. And this is a process that because it's all in one place and you're not relying on, you know, dozens and dozens of emails or dozens and dozens of actual, you know, mailed documents to return to you, uh, just makes the overall approval process much, much faster. So that's a success story for the waivers. For automations in general, there's lots of them. And I, I have a lot of customers who have seen enormous success with like a four-step automation process like I just described with prelim, some kind of reminder, and then a notice of intent to lean and a lean for approval. And that is super effective. Uh, I have people get paid. Awesome. Thank you for sharing. Um, mm -hmm. Is there anybody else who would like to throw in a question? We have about five more minutes left. Um, so we've got some time. And uh, if not, you know, we have our our screen up here. Um, if you wanted to get a more personalized one on one call with someone from our team, you can absolutely request a demo at the link on the screen. Um, but while we're here, feel free to throw any other questions in the Q&A box or in the chat. Oh, I think we might be, I think we might be good. Well, I want to thank everybody for joining us today. Um, everyone will receive a recording of this and uh, Danielle, correct me if I'm wrong, but also the deck I believe that we use to present. Yes, this will all be sent in an email tomorrow. So keep an eye out for that. Great. All right, well, thank you all. And um, it, was, uh, it was great presenting to you and I hope I was able to help answer some questions today. Definitely. Thank you all so Thanks much. Thanks, everybody. Have a good one.